Okay, I think that's everyone back in. Great. Um, hey, lovely. Okay, look, everyone, thanks uh, for coming back for the second half of our AGM. Uh, and this is the second panel discussion today. Um, so earlier on, we had Ben Freeman with a panel discussing uh, the cost of living crisis. Uh, and this afternoon, for the next hour or so, uh, it's a discussion on trade unionism and quite a joining union. Um, now, we're joined by Car McSherry, uh, who is the chair of the North Linster branch of uh, FORSA, the SNA uh, section, um, and Mary Ryder, who is secretary of uh, Cork City TUI branch. Um, and fair to say both here in a, in a personal capacity, uh, but very helpful to, to discuss unions and, and, and um, give thoughts and, and education on that. So I had, as it happened, I had a conversation with Mary last night um, uh, ahead of this, um, just about my own experience as, as a worker. Uh, I'm now in my mid 40s. I have been working as a software engineer or in the software field since, since my mid 20s. Um, I've never been in a union, like most workers, I, I think, in Ireland. Um, now, over that time, I have certainly been involved in industrial disputes and industrial relations events of different kinds. I've, I've been put on protective notice along with all my colleagues in, in one business. We um, you know, went through a 30 day period there and, and had a, quite a positive outcome from a worker's point of view um, to that. Uh, I've been involved in collective negotiation of salaries uh, in, a, in a, another company, uh, but always outside of, of trade unionism. Um, I've also seen you know, other parts of, of, of we say, work life, uh, people whose um, majority of their salary or close to the majority uh, was, was being paid in bonuses um, and that being cut, you know, overnight um, and those people being left on, on the hook uh, for that um, and without any sense of, of knowing where to go. It was a non-unionized workplace too. Um, lots and lots of bogus self-employment um, to the point where sometimes it, it's considered to be just a part of life, just just culture. Um, I would have thought that too, probably at, at one time. Um, and then, you know, I, I had the experience of going for a mortgage and uh, sitting down side by side with my wife and telling the, the bank manager what my, my salary was. And it's all sounded good. And then my employment status and watching him literally draw a line through my salary that it just didn't count. Um, and I've, I've learned then that the benefits of of, I suppose, being a, a, a fully recognized employee and, and the protections that come with that. Um, so uh, if I can, can I can I start off with both of you um, from that perspective? Um, you know, talking to someone like me, uh, who has, you know, a, a long time worker, lots of experience, but has never been involved in a union, but have considered joining a union, um, but have never gone further than that. So let's just begin there. Carl, what is a union? What can you do for me? I, I would kind of, when I'm trying to explain to people, I'd kind of have three strands. So there's the collective bargaining that we all know about. But I would say, you know, we got a 6.5% increase for, uh, FORS is the largest public sector union in Ireland. Uh, so it's 80,000 members. So we have a 6.5% um, increase in our pay thanks to the collective bargaining. You know, so that's the, the overall thing. But then things that people mightn't be aware of is um, there's a lot of benefits, like there's fuel cards. And I mean, maybe we're not encouraging that in the green movement, but, you know, for, for cost of living, there's um, a free medical line, free, you know, uh, advice. As a rep, then I would be talking to people that maybe have gotten into difficulty in work. And especially for SNAs, it can do with children. And there's child protection issues and things like that. And that's when I think it really becomes powerful and important because we have the legal expertise to send in staff to help people and not necessarily be adversarial and but just try and resolve an issue and that the worker feels protected. So they're the three things I talk about people if I want to recruit to you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very good. Mary, what, what are your yeah, thoughts? I'd say, I'd say, yeah, all of that, all of that, all that Carl has mentioned there. And I would say like that uh, people have said to me here in Ireland like that we don't need um, we don't need a union because we're so well protected legislatively. There's such a lot of good legislation on the books um, that already that that builds in um, the, the rights of workers, um, you know, all, all the time. But the thing is that every single line of that legislation um, is put in place because of the work of the trades unions and it has been like from from Jim Larkin right up to the present day every single thing is is put in is put in place by the work of the trade union and trade union activism and like exactly as Carl says there about the expertise that you have uh, for people who you know to support people that is that is very very true I mean I know somebody recently who was in um, who was in um, an, a non-union job and I know that during the recruitment process and during the induction process of it it wasn't stated straight out that you are not to join a union but it was stated it was definitely implied that you are not to join a union and it was it was kind of the thing was like this is such a warm place to be that you'll never need a union and um but but in, in fact in fact it didn't end well is the way i'll put it it didn't end well for the individual concerned and when it doesn't end well you're completely on your own and like as, as carol said there the the support of the the your your the collegiality of the people within the union and the and the expertise that is built up there within it it's definitely something it's definitely something to be considered you do also in my experience and i mean i'm working in the public sector as well uh, in in the in education and in my experience like the 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 public set the public service is quite open to to negotiating with unions and it's quite a long history of recognizing unions this is not so easily the case in a lot of the uh, the, the shorter term um the, the more recently uh, shall i say established uh, industries and and employers that they are they are less uh, they are less done they're they're less they're less experienced and less practiced in dealing with the unions and less welcoming of them too i would say in a lot of cases yeah that's that's yeah it, and certainly from a kind of a, you know, a software point of view, always in, in, in the private sector, um, you know, they, there are, I have never been in a workplace where we've been encouraged to join a union. Um, I, I, outside of when I was very young working in hotels, I, I don't think I've been in a workplace with a union in, in any way. Um, and and <clears throat> I mean, when just just like you were describing, Mary, you know, it, it always would be encouraged that you know we work in a, you know a, a good healthy environment and you can have a discussion over anything um and largely that's true i have to say uh but i mean something like what has happened with twitter employees recently um and and you know you you, you can look at other other you know uh, big fdi companies very similarly um where when it comes to it i i i wonder are those workers fully aware of their rights um, and, you know, while while, you know, the HR departments may be uh, telling them, you know, certain aspects, uh, how much do you think? I know you said it's not an, ad an adversarial thing, uh, Carl, but, but it can be sometimes to, to, <laughs> to, not to, to, what, to, to yeah. what degree can you can you rely upon your employer fully? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, and, and even with Twitter, like you can have a new boss very quickly. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, it all changes. I mean, everything changed when that new boss came in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and okay, so what what can a union do for me there? In, in the case of Twitter. Yeah, for example, or something well, like that. Not necessarily Twitter, but but any case like that where things change rapidly overnight. I, I think there just needs to be a culture in Ireland that, that there is a little bit of classism sometimes with with unions and that they're say, it's seen as a certain and a certain type of people go for it like like say with twitter um they probably would have seen it coming to a certain extent i know he got in what three weeks before he sent out those emails but you can be prepared beforehand as well if there's you know you think that you're going you know your rights beforehand um to, to group together like if you get an email from a principal or sorry my instance would be a principal oops but if you get an email from um a boss and you're suddenly in a blind panic because it's, I've dealt with members where they are told they have a grievance against them and it's terrifying so if you can group together with other people and talk it out and so they could have done that on Twitter you know but I think what happened was they had 24 hours to decide if they wanted to stay in their job or not and uh, the the head person in Twitter has taken them to court and won 
you know, thanks to Irish and European legislation. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, that's all I'd say. I'm Musk. I'm not a fan. <laughs> Mary? No, yeah, that, that, that's the thing, you see. The, the organisation, like, the, in, as I said, that in Ireland there is, and in Europe, there's quite robust legislation with regard to employment law. And, um, but it's, it does still depend on, I mean, I, I would even see instances, and I was mentioning some of these in, in particular with you last evening. I'm not going to go into the detail here now, but I, I, uh, I do know that even in our own organisation, where they, which is um, a public organisation, the Education and Training Board, the like the the there's a very very substantial um, there's a very substantial um, HR department, and like the HR department is essentially on the side of the the organisation. It is essentially there to see that the or that everybody that they're not incurring uh, liabilities to their staff or to their would-be staff or their part-timers or whoever it is they're not incurring liabilities which they can't meet and that's really the big thing of it that they, they, the people are properly you know everything is worked properly everything everybody has their right role and everything like that but they will try and there there have been instances in the past where things have been fast and loose and where they do not tell the the the, the staff of their rights and particularly if you're in a precarious role like part-time part-time or temporary role within within an organization you you can feel as if like you know as long as I'm turning up I'm paid and if I don't turn up for any reason I'm not being paid and there is a truth in that but there is also but there are also rights um that you that you do um accrue um when you are particularly in in the place in the workplace there are rights that that do that you do you know keep get take up and that are there just by virtue of the fact that they're paying you that um you you have rights and they largely you have to find those out for yourself and the union will tell you those and like in 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 workplaces like my own the union is well established and the union is is on first name terms with the boss of the york the ceo and all the rest of it we know we know each other very very well but um but like if you are looking at something like twitter it's it, while the staff in ireland every worker in ireland has the right to join a union but but there is neither but there is no corresponding obligation on the on the organization to talk to the union um, but ev but every every um every worker does have the right to join a union but so that's that's the thing so it's and that the only way it's going to make uh, an inroad is if uh, there is strength in numbers so that if you have more people in your workplace who are who are members of the union and I would say even my own job like an adult literacy organizer that that particular role was negotiated first I mean I, I was and my, my colleagues were were um temporary uh, temporary like essentially we had no no stated anything and um, within within the education system and it was the TUI who actually organized and negotiated and met with us and met with the department of education and met with the, the, the ETBs there were VECs at the time to to uh, to put that in place and now adult literacy organizers have got a proper contract with proper terms and conditions and so on and it is backed up by a, a memorandum the departmental memorandum so it's 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 everything is 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 dot 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 everything is lined up there and everything is in place and so i have that security and so th th this is this is the thing with it really um so it, you you it, it has to be uh, i mean i i do remember a former colleague within the, the greens who was trying to uh, trying to negotiate with in um, a, a, an organization here, a service organization here in, in Cork. And essentially it was so under the radar, like she literally could not afford to, uh, to even have this whispered at work because each of their works, each of their employment contracts was so precarious that if she were to actually say, if it were to become a whisper at work at all, they were done. And as it turned out, her, her job actually terminated before it got, it really developed legs. And I know at the time she reckoned that there had been a whisper. <laughs> she reckoned there had been a whisper and that's why that's why she wasn't renewed but it's it's so these are the things these are the things that can be quite difficult to actually get on with it but i would say that if you do want to if you are in a in a, in a place where you do want to uh, to to start a union or have a union represent you at work first talk to the union first talk to find find the appropriate union who will who will handle your your um your your particular 
role and talk to them and see how they can go about how they would recommend um, uh, working through it and, and, and starting there. That would be my recommendation. I see there's a hand up. There's a hand up from Maeve Cody and I, Maeve is someone I know, it, it, you know, coming from a similar background to myself, so I'm interested in what Maeve thinks. Yeah, um, it's, it's something Carl said and probably you as well, Oliver, because I am like I did engineering degree, so you went in and I, I've worked in telecoms and now software. So it's kind of but I remember my degree in at Belfast we did part of you had the technical degree but we also did stuff about employment law or uh, trade union law it was part of a module or it was part of what we studied but it was taught to us like look you'll be an engineering manager sometimes so you'll have to negotiate with unions it wasn't taught to you as you may need to be a member of a union because yeah. that's the way they approached you like you you could be in a manufacturing or you could could be in a, a certain type of industry where you have people who are in unions and you'll have to deal, you'll have, you need to know the history of unions because not that you need it, which they will come I, for I, you. When I found out when I started employment was it was the reverse. You actually did need. <laughs> so it was it was the kind of way, the mentality that we were taught at university. Um, so I did it was electrical electronic engineering, but it was a quite you could go into a broad range of areas from that. Um, I worked principally in two companies. One was in Dublin, which was a telecoms operator, and the it didn't recognise unions, but you were allowed to be a member of a union. So I think it's like I think it, it was said. So you could join, and you could have if there were issues in work, have someone from the union represent you, but they wouldn't negotiate on salary, or they wouldn't. So we had that strange situation. So it was a bit of a kind of they recognised they couldn't stop us, but so the union was organized and there were union reps in work but the, the employer wouldn't negotiate with the union but we did find it was kind of a there were an awful lot of issues of uh, redundancies and not and kind of people being told oh your job's gone you can relocate there was kind of a lot of dubious stuff going on and the union did having that about no it was about knowing your rights and I think a lot of people didn't know their rights and there were people even who brought the company to court on an individual basis and won just about redundancy and basic things like that. So it was a very, very valuable resource, but I found it's only when maybe people found themselves in a situation that they sort of ran to the union. So where there was others who were quite good at trying to get it organized, but it was, it's only in that situation where you saw what was happening that you realize, okay, actually we do need the union. It's not, <laughs> yeah, um, company I mean, at the moment doesn't even recognize unions. And interestingly in the past, because it had more manufacturing side to it, it, it it did have a union in the past it did have union representation of that but it actually gradually got rid of it and probably tried to target employees who were in unions and I think I missed it I came in after all that but I've heard it from people who are longer in the company that yeah we used to have a union and now it's kind of they managed to totally erode the union from the company and that is a software telecoms company so it would be similar to what Oliver Probably and, came from. And, and maybe for a, a lot of workers like me and, and, and in other circumstances too, it's those dubious cases, I think, that might suddenly make you think, you know, I, it, it's not clear to me that my rights are being obviously forgotten about, but it's not clear to me what I'm supposed to do here. Um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm interested in on, on kind of developing this a little bit more because I, I know from talking to you again last night, um, uh, Mary and, and you mentioned it too just now Carl about the solidarity aspect um, yeah. and of the kind of the sharing of knowledge um, and, and that wouldn't be something maybe that that would be mentioned in 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 the textbooks that Maeve is talking about so yeah tell me about that. I don't know if Mary wants to go first but I was I spoke, I spoke last you talk later I, I was going to just add to what Maeve was saying there with SNAs we've good enough density we've you know a good percentage of SNAs are in the union but uh, what can happen is you could have, you know, 10 teachers, three SNAs and two of them are in the union and the third one would say, well, why will I bother joining? So there's a freeloading aspect that is irritating. But um, then we have to emphasize to members you have the protection. I mean, ideally, you should be in the union three, six months before we can advocate for you. Now, there's there can be exceptional circumstances, but um the, the other side uh, I was kind of alluding to last night is the social justice side of the union, which um, I got involved with. And 
uh, we can bring motions to conference and get things adopted. So I, I brought a motion on safe access zones last year. Uh, my colleague, uh, Linda um, O'Sullivan, brought um, a motion, uh, a few people did, on domestic violence leave, yeah. which is, had a huge impact. So that is uh, something that not everybody's into, but I think younger people are getting into it. And it, it's real power because it's it's 80,000 people. If you get the vote across, which isn't always easy, no. 80,000 people are backing you on an a important social justice issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would agree with that. Actually, when Oliver rang me yesterday, um, I was in the middle of uh, a motions meeting for our Congress, which will be happening in uh, at Easter time, and uh, we were there putting putting the motions and like those of us who are involved in politics already and like in political parties we in the greens particularly there is this policy council which formulates policy and discusses it at length and and so on and depth across the party but in the unions you we don't do that and the policies the policies all are dealt with at the congress and so so we, you have to put them forward in such a way you know you can't have a rant of emotion you have to phrase it in such a way that it was kind of directing the executive to take a certain stance or or implement certain policy do certain make certain engagements or or whatever but they they, they uh, but it is it, it they are very very wide ranging and they do go, cover a lot of the issues like uh, the ones now that carl had mentioned but they do also mention things like i mean we're putting one in there now on on um, leave for surrogate parents and um, so on that's that's coming up and for to people to take parental leave um, in a more flexible way um, across the across the time and also for things like moving your job you know being able to move your job from one area to another or one school to another or one one center to another without losing your terms and conditions without losing your your contracts of indefinite duration or your permanency or your place on uh, on the incremental scale and th these kind of things and these are these are people you know these are these are the small details of people's lives which need to be discussed out in public and and dealt with there and they are not the issues which will drag people across the picket line um you know um in the in the depths of the winter these are the, and that's not what they're for that's not what they're for i mean the union isn't all about isn't all about uh, you know as i say picketing and terms and conditions are like you know wages and so on it it is about the it can be about these little small details which make an enormous difference to people's lives and and so so the union is has quite a bit of strength on that and can and as carl said when you get the, the thousands of people when you get it across that congress which is obviously a representative sample i mean there'd be we, we'd have from the cork branch we'd have about 10 10 or 11 people representing this cork branch at, at the congress but like there is hundreds here, that's 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 the tip of it there's hundreds of us here who go along so and that's that's across the whole country that they will all they'll all send that similar representative sample and it's um and it's quite it's quite a it's quite a, it's quite powerful i mean the speeches are powerful and the 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 feeling of having succeeded is is also quite powerful so it's 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 yeah the social justice is huge in it as well as everything else and and like what you were saying there too carl about the freeloading i mean that is that is absolutely the case i think in in a lot of the unions that there are there are people who will say oh sure the union will do it anyway and i don't have to be there paying myself and turning up to the meetings and doing all the rest of it and the 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 uh, the thing is that if there is if there is a successful you know change in policy or if there's an establishment of a right or something like that yes you will get the benefit of it but exactly as carl has said if you are the person who's in, at the sticky end of the of the of the thing if you're if you feel that your boss is 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 mistreating you or is giving you undue responsibility or overworking you or uh, you know asking you to take something that you shouldn't be taking on um uh, and so on and you don't if you if you are part of the union you have the backing of your your area rep of the person within the party not even the person in your own center or your own school or or whatever but the person like at, at the larger scale who has got the the kind of the, the 
power of the organization behind them to to support you on that and to and to tell you for a start whether you're you know whether you're delusional yourself or whether you do actually have a claim uh, or do have a, a case to, to to make and so it's it's fantastic to have that level of support behind you and you know it, it really is and I've seen it in action and it's not always it's not always um you know public quite a few people quite a few people have have um issues come up which are quite personal and quite private and they can be you know they can be relationship within the workplace or they can be something that's affecting them at home that's that's happening in the workplace or or that kind of thing and the the area rep can can come in on their behalf and support them through that and can you know get get things across the line for them and nobody knows and that's just the holy all of it nobody knows and and even if they say at the end well we had three of the following and four of the following and five of the following it's absolutely randomized um in terms of kind of feedback to the branch and so and, there's, and, there's and those are kind of things that for for someone like me not in union i i <clears throat> what you just what you just described towards the end of what you're saying mary i would mm. never have have seen those have been part of union mm. um and then I mean, what you were both talking about, about, um, you know, adopting so, you know, positions on, on, on issues, not necessarily to do with workplace relations, but, but no. broader no. issues. Um, uh, I mean, in, in some ways, I wouldn't have recognized that. But mm -hmm. in other ways, that's the stuff you see, you know, on the 61 News a lot. Um, like, that's what you see union demonstrating about. Yeah. Uh, so and and you know obviously everybody here is is in a political party or in a, a, an organization interested or is interested in the political party interested in these matters. Mm -hmm. um, so could you could you tell me about those kind of things? I mean, you, you mentioned yesterday, uh, Carl, about the you know leave for for victims of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's workplace related, um, mm -hmm. but outside of what you might normally consider. Um, but very obviously workplace related. But then there's also things that are on a blurry line, like safe access zones. I can see how that will be related to healthcare workers. But it's also kind of a wider, a wider picture of things. And then also you mentioned it yesterday about you know the raised roof campaigns. Uh, mm -hmm. You know things that are you know adjacent to to work. Um, you know it, it, yeah. it it's why we work, but it, it it's not yeah. in the workplace. So can you tell me just how those kind of things work in a union? Well, we have a very strong campaigns unit. And before I was in Forza, before I was uh, chair, I was campaign officer. Um, and I'm very on Twitter now, not so much since Elon took over. But um, so there, there's some good campaigns coming from the union and it, it's a great way of disseminating and, and spreading the news. So there's uh, the More Power to You campaign, which is to give more power back to county councils. And I mean... Uh, I think some of that could lead to county councils being able to build more houses. I mean, if you, that's, you know, there's also the Raise the Roof, which we're all very aware of. And I was marching in the the uh, Raise the Roof protest there was it two weeks ago. There was a great turnout. I mean, that affects everybody, you know. Um, I, I think, yeah, it's for a better society, you know, trade unions. It's not just about going on strike. And I think, you know, when I tell people I'm involved with the union, they zone out but but if I tell people I'm involved with the union I, I try to emphasize it's not just about kicking in doors and going on strike and it's about improving society and it's a different way of doing it than the government way and um, there's also um, a four-day week campaign you know which has taken off as well um, and for me personally I would have to say you know as an SNA I absolutely love my job but from a personal development point of view I haven't been able to do a lot Whereas with the union, when I got involved as campaign officer, um, I was sent on training on public speaking. I was put into the doll, I, you know, to speak on issues. I would never have gotten those opportunities if I wasn't in the union. So it's it, it's um, I I don't, I don't sound like it's the best place in the world, but it, it is about um, improving society, and I, I definitely with the just transition that is it, it's it's an overlap in my mind. You know, it is, yeah. And the and the thing like about the um, you know, the wages you were saying there, now like um, about um, uh, um, Maeve, you were saying about uh, that they couldn't negotiate on on behalf of the workers with regard to wages in a private company. 
um, wages are a different kettle of fish because they are, uh, they are, um, you know, they, they, they don't have, they don't work to a sort of a national circular letter or a national memorandum of understanding or, or something like that, that has been, that is public like you know anybody who's a public who's in the public service has got uh, has there is a memorandum somewhere back along the track that relates to your your terms and conditions of employment but in the in the private sector that is far less the case and the the um and i know like for instance i know we have a, a colleague here in the Cork Greens who is in the private sector of education and I mean one of the things that he often says is that the unions is like the refuge of the bad teacher and I'm kind of going well fuck no like you know absolutely not you know kind of thing that's not that's not if you were you know and I'm, kind of, I'm kind of going that's not what the union does at all and um, you know but but the union does it does it does uh it does uh, defend the, the professional competencies and the recognition of the professional competencies, competencies of the staff. And it does defend things like your, your, um, your, your educational, you know, the educational um, must haves, for instance, particularly with, with regard to the training and the, and the, the, the education that you must have to, to do certain things and recognizing that things are, are defended. And so that there isn't this, race to the bottom of of bringing in people who are who don't have those trainings and competencies in, in it and do people get by of course they get by but by and large uh, by and large they um it, it that is that is it is a good thing but apart from the money apart from the money and apart from defend uh, like negotiating wage increases and so on which is obviously a huge thing when it comes up like the collective bargaining not only within each individual union but across the unions um it, it can be it is it is a campaign which which it can gain momentum across across a number of unions but it it, it is actually the terms and conditions the other terms and conditions um which are not strictly money related the other terms and conditions like you know the things like that when you are you know when you can be brought in out of hours when you can be rung up um at home whether you can have your your four day week whether you can have like two days in work on two days or three days at home or or you know working from home or these kinds of things and these are these are the uh, these are the, the the things which the union will can can negotiate and um so it's it's definitely so so yeah that's definitely the thing it's 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 huge and i'm i totally get what carl says there about the about the person development because like our, our crowd are always offering training training in all sorts going on all the time and there is also like a huge cross union campaigning thing as well i mean in cork here we have the one big union i think it's the one campaign or the something campaign in cork which can't remember exactly what it's called is one anyway in it which is essentially the um which is cross union it is it is cross union is based is based in sif but it is um but it is cross union and and it it takes on it it, it takes a position on the like of raise the roof that was there that was the big thing they had done there in the last couple of years so you you do have those you do have those campaigns and like they're like raise the roof you know nobody's expecting your boss to put a roof over your head physically you know but at the same time your boss must the, the, the work we do the work we do in our in our paid lives must allow us to put a roof over our heads and that's why things like um that's why things like the raise the roof campaigns are so important so there's another law of associates there alistair i see alistair yeah do you want to come in alistair then yeah i mean okay um full disclosure i'm a union i'm a union rep and for for ifoot in in university <laughs> um <laughs> well done so one of the ones that yeah people don't get that that will happen behind the scenes is everything that Mary and uh, Mary and uh, Anton and have been saying, um, and Carol have been saying. Uh, the one of the ones that will happen is a long. It's this can be a long term negotiation and a long term discussion. So there will be the individual issues that are happening day to day, which you are handling privately on behalf of people without it being public, as uh, as being pointed out. Uh, but there's also the case of you're applying continuous pressure. So precari precarity has been a key problem within the university sector to a degree that most people wouldn't recognize. Um, students get shocked when they find their lecturer. Uh, you know, uh, well, a student helping out, a, helping out at a food bank shocked to find their lecturer queuing up for food because they're not pay paid sufficiently. 
Yeah. Um, but working on that, basically, you know, that we've had a long-term campaign through the new, within the colleges to deal with precarity and work uh, that at times has led, uh, has led to movement slowly within the colleges when they get campaigns as to what they can do about it. Um, so, you know, there won't, there won't necessarily be a strike on that, you know, but at a certain point when things uh, things are looking good financially, the, the you know, you know, we will be making the same case both to the ministers and the government at the same time as we're making it to the university heads. Um, and so when when the money comes, we basically sort of say, OK, now we fix the, the precarity problem. And we work through literally in each individual issue because we know who, you know, we know which people are being impacted and we can go to that with HR. But we can also go and basically say uh, there are issues in the in the sector of the in the sector of the university that the call it, that upper management are not aware of. Please resolve these, uh, and, and it's not just a personal issue, but it can be uh, you know a, a subunit is doing has gone rogue in various ways, mm -hmm. and and then you're negotiating with minister you know over a long time you bring the minister in for uh, to to talk at the at our national conventions. But you open up a long-term conversation with the with the department, and you are basically bringing to them other facts that they will not be aware of on the ground, and so that's the long-term negotiation is a layer that that is quiet, is successful in terms of the long-term history of the university uh, of the unions, but it is not not recognised by many people who are not in them or no. in the private sector who don't get to see any of this. No. I'm happy you brought that up now because I, I, I want to kind of shift on to longer term things. Um, and, 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 and you mentioned this in, in my email yesterday, Carl. Um, so the name of this organization, obviously, the Just Transition Greens. Um, and I, I wonder what are your thoughts on uh, the role, but also the responsibility of, of unions and, and workers in, in managing that transition um, and in understanding it? So both in communicating it and in managing it and, and also in, in protecting workers during that transition. Um, and about workers taking control and ownership potentially of, of that transition. Um, so not to trump that on anyone, uh, but Carl, do you want to go first again? Um, do you have thoughts on that? Uh, with the unions, um, like it, it initially, I think, as far as I know, the just transition uh, movement came from trade unions. That's what I'm told by the trade union. But, um, but it, you know, it's it's. I suppose we anybody on this call is aware of what's happening in the world, and we are in agreement that it's, it's quite scary. We know migration is going to be a huge thing, and we know that the world is going to be less habitable and I suppose we can see the writing on the wall that people who are poor are going to be impacted first so to me personally I think it's things like being able to afford to retrofit your house you know it's grand to get a grant and say you know maybe I'm, it's not the right place to say it, but you can get a grant to get your house retrofitted but if you don't have the money to pay the money up front or to pay part of it it's very there's very little you can do you know um but i suppose that that kind of thing is is just to to have um have equality i think that's what's deep rooted in everybody it's it's not um it's not that anybody wants anything extra i mean i do think um the government is, is reasonably doing okay because they the money towards the heating bills the the cost of living those kind of things but you know it, the impact on poorer people and on single families is just something to be cognizant of, you know, yeah. and it's something that that's the reason I'm a member uh, of the Just Transition Greens. Yeah, and and, and I suppose just to be clear, you're right. It, the, the term did did originate with trade union movement, and 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 um, I mean, I think that that demonstrates that trade unionism uh, was. Arguably, the first out first out of the gates on this uh, long before employers um, and and even governments were were taking it seriously, um, and in in recognizing the impacts it would have on people, um, and I you know, the, the history of the term shows also how how workers have 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 recognized and and, and seized 
sees it the the, yeah. the, the initiative on it. Um, yeah, the the unions the unions are the unions are the voice of our and and are the collective voice of the people who are most affected by this. And whether they are university teachers or SNAs or office workers or or what or street sweepers, what, whatever their job is, the workers are the ones who are the most. Are, are the most affected and like we have seen it in the past and we've seen it i'm not saying this government is immune to it either but we have seen it in the past like that you know when when policies are made by government they are made in a very short term um with a very short term frame l largely they have been always made on a very short term frame i, I would say that currently a longer term frame is being taken but that has been forced on us not only by the greens main government but by the falling apartness of the world as it is at the moment the, 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 to to use alistair's phrase the precarity of of our situation at the moment it is it is definitely there but the but the unions have been aware of this all the time they have been aware of this you know because they've seen the people who are trying to avail of the hardship fund and they have seen the people who are coming forward and saying I can't actually keep up this job because I have to travel too far to work and I can't get the same job in uh, closer to my home and uh, you know like this so they, they've seen this and so the idea of changing it as it doesn't surprise me at all I hadn't heard actually that it had originated the just transition um, idea had originated within the union but it doesn't surprise me at all that it did um, because they, they, these are definitely the ones you know these are the ones these are the these are representing the people who are raising the children for 20 years in their own house um, and having to cope with shortages of various kinds and like you're talking there Carl, about like retrofitting your house I mean if you're in rented accommodation you yeah. have practically no role in retrofitting your house you know and and just like just put a thicker a thicker legging jacket on the water tank is almost as much as you can do and to, to you know for it or heavier curtains on the window and um it's so but you can do precious little um you know precious little about that about it like that so these are it, so you know the union the union is there to defend um the the you know the express needs of the workers um with within all of this so yeah that's it. and one thing i would add is um unions are very democratic Thanks. anybody can go for any position anybody uh, and you don't need qualifications maybe it's a good thing i don't know but um it, it is a very and, and the, the branches should be autonomous from the union officials so it's workers speaking for themselves and some great activists have come out from that movement so mm. to be aware of that as well definitely I, I I was interested that you, you, you obviously well it's not you that didn't obviously go for it but that that, that when you were talking um, Carl about the, about the just transition you, it was the concept of fairness uh, yeah. that came to mind first and it wasn't necessarily um, you know the way we, we we think of some industries as as being phased out and 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 those workers being made unemployed it's it's about the fairness overall um, and I, I I think that's in, in the research done on on climate action, that's a big thing. Not not only necessarily among you know people in you know in employment and in workplaces, but the transition overall. Um, and going back to kind of what you you were discussing earlier about the things adjacent to to you know to workplace relations, um, and about how they are relevant to the transition. I'm I'm thinking of things like changes in transport, um, you know where people will live. Uh, where they will work, uh, working from home, the four day week, um, and and that these are things that are you know not necessarily obviously part of um, climate action and, and transition, but which are you know elements within that stream, and and I can see how that you know they are very relevant to, to trade unionism. So in 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 your own unions, and you know Mary, you're having a congress coming up. Well, it'll be, my, it'll be my, it'll be it'll be Easter, like it's always Easter. But the, yeah. but the, this is the other thing about it, like that. There's you, you, the clock is set. the The annual calendar is very, very um, predictable and everything, you know. So this week we're putting in the motions for Congress, well, and even, though, yeah. even though Congress will be at Easter. And um, do, do you know what I mean? So that they're they're going in now, and they will be all gone through, and there will be thousands of them, and they will all be gone through 
to see if they have if they meet the criteria um, to go on the on the the, the 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 program and and so on and then they will we will they will the, the, that will all go out to the members again and we're talking about the democracy that will all go out all the motions will all go out to the members and the members will will go through the them and the members will decide what order they will appear on the on the program so that the the ones which are regarded as most urgent will be at the top of that of that particular section and so on down and um so they and it is there you know it is it is done like that so by the time it gets to congress the the expectation is that it is the most urgent and the most relevant motions that will appear at the top of the list and and we go through that and the ones that don't get onto the floor fall and essentially that's essentially that but um so that's and i yeah. I'm, I'm, i don't and, and are there are there ones without you know necessarily no. giving us a scoop here uh but no. you know are, are there ones you know within that stream of of a just transition you know not necessarily to you know straight to the well, joke well at the, the moment at the moment in, um in the at the moment, I would say within our own, within Cork ETB here at the moment, there is quite a big move within the ETB on things like, um, um, you know, greening the curriculum and greening the workplace and all the rest of it. And we're doing that kind of in-house uh, a lot of the time. So they haven't quite made it onto the, onto the from Cork, they haven't. But I wouldn't be at all surprised if they've made it on at some stage from around the country. And they have in the past, they have in the past, I mean, they, ha they have in the past, um, it has been a, a key thing on, on like um on, on you know on aspects of as i say green in the curriculum or or reducing the opening hours of buildings or this kind of thing you know things which will reduce costs reduce uh, reduce power reduce all of those things i can't I'm, I'm waffling here now because i don't remember the exact detail but they do come up they have come up um in the past about those and they are quite they're quite powerful and people really do go for it and they do they do get it and the fact that we're all sitting there in a big hotel for three days kind of like locked in um, doesn't mean that um, we don't know what's going on outside the door either, you know, like that. And so it's uh, it's very it's it's very very uh, very things are uh, the the wider the, the wider lens is always part of it. I know mm -hmm. Carl Leforza was very involved in the in the four day week campaign and the yes. trial that's finished on that. Do you want to talk about that for a bit? Um, well, there was Joe Connor was really behind that. He's gone to America now, um, but. Yeah, it, it's um, basically they've done trials in Iceland and off the top of my head, I know definitely in Iceland they did studies and England as well. Now there's studies everywhere, but they were the initial studies, but they found the productivity went up. Yeah. Uh, the same amount of work was done. Uh, the people had more time to do leisurely things, go for walks, get out, get into a park, be with their families. And they still managed to fit the same amount of work into the four days. Uh, so it's, companies are trialing it in Ireland. I can't remember the name of the company that did it in Ireland, but it the it's just even for myself. I have to admit I was slightly cynical initially, um, you know. Uh, but the the results are coming out that are very positive, um, and it's spreading to America. It's a whole movement now, um, so. Yeah. Yeah, and we we one of the one of the motions that we are looking at is is on um is on um kind of like the thing about job share job share in education particularly is is quite a, is quite difficult yeah. because people will often say like well you're job sharing you're going to get half the work but you're still having to go in every day because you're teaching such a class and they're time timetabled every day so you still have to go in so what's the bloody point in job sharing if you don't have any actual day off and uh, so this this is these are these are the kinds of issues which come up and there obviously are ways around this and sort of like you know to to do a longer period of say your maths class on the two days that you would be in school and none at all on the two days that you wouldn't be in school or or that that kind of a thing and so it's um so to, to do to take it to take a, a longer look at it but it's so but but it takes it takes the it takes the union to 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 work through on people because there definitely are individuals who are on part time on on job share and it it from a particular from the point of view of organizing the rest of their lives it makes absolutely no difference to the to them you know it's just it's just that they're in less it, they're getting paid for less but there's just as much driving to and from work and dry, and mm -hmm. organizing babysitters on the whole days and all the rest of it there's just as much of all of this 
but um so rather than rather than sort of putting it all on monday and tuesday and then having thursday and friday off and uh you know so that that's kind of so that's definitely one of the ones that just which we have we have put on the which we are we are chasing up we just have to see where it goes we just have to see where it goes and i mean and the union putting it through i mean it definitely raises the conversation it raises the conversation it raises the the pressure on 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 um you know the the country and on the way the system is organized and so on but it it does it is not in itself the last word on it it needs to go on further out and it needs to be taken up by other unions it needs to be taken up by other political parties it needs to be taken up by other or by and particularly by employers and uh, so uh, so on of that and i mean I, we had also a colleague who was in in university and i don't know whether he was in ifoot or not or whether it ever came to ifoot but um but the issue was around around flexible flexible work and around around the idea of flexible working and like it, I mean, in the end, it just came to a parting of ways, and that's that was the only way it could be solved. And that, and I, I have often thought, like you know, <laughs> there had to be another question asked here. There had to be another. This had to go. This could have gone someplace else with with it. And it's so so. It's very very. Uh, it's very very difficult to know how how you know very, to to bring people with you. So do you know what I mean? You have you have to be prepared for that collective collective uh, negotiation and for uh, like allowing the the help. That you will get from the union for that um you know uh, rather than just standing on your own dignity with regard to it you know it needs it the the union uh, is a, is would have been i i think the union would have would have been at least a support in in those things but anyway as and i say I one one final question then and, and thank you both for for your time uh, this afternoon mm. um so th this is an organization that that puts itself at you know green and left green left um, it was described earlier on as being eco-socialist, uh, which it's, it's I think will be agreeable to everyone. Uh, but I I wonder what both of you think of the relationship between the green movement and um, and the labour movement. Um, and I'm also in my mind is the phrase that the the green movement is is the labour movement of the 21st century. So where do you see the relationships between the green movement? Uh, today and and the labor movement um and how do you see that developing well i mean i think i think they are naturally um they are naturally uh, on the same tack i that's what i think myself that they they are but it is but i think the fact that um so few people are actually um members of trades unions and so many people who would be active and energized by um by green issues and by th things like environmental or or social justice issues or so on are employed in the private sector i mean quite quite a few of us quite a few of our of our particularly green party colleagues are employed in the private sector um, and that that is so there isn't the same natural um or, or obvious shall i say reach for the the labor the labor movement do, do you know what i mean i mean they have socialist ideals or they come from a socialist background or whatever but there but there is but that that's where the that's where the that's where we're not kind of linking up well enough in in there is that people the, in, it's it's down to individuals in 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 the end it's down to individuals and i think there's also an impatience very often within people who are are um green leaning there's an impatience that things have to happen sooner and faster and we're, we're way too late already and everything like like this which is absolutely true i mean it's absolutely true we're so far behind the curve on on all of our environmental practices and policies but the the uh, the union in 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 itself i think um, alistair used the phrase there about like slow burn that it's the slow burn of things that it takes it takes the while to to kind of develop the the momentum on on things and it's uh, it's so so i would say yeah i'd say they 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 are ideologically they are bedfellows but they are but it is difficult to to bring everybody along at the same pace carl do you thought yeah, I, i'd agree with mary there and, and and to add to it i would say i think um what does attract younger like younger people seem to me to be more ecologically aware and mm -hmm. uh, they also want things to happen fast and they're idealistic so that's what we kind of need because we do need to move fast we so do. i would say 
you know, I, I mentioned in my email too, we went on a school tour to Lullymore Park and the kids in there, the knowledge they had, they did projects, they saw bogs being re-wetted, you know, all these things, but the knowledge they had already. But I think this is it. We need to get younger people into the trade union movement as well as the, they're in the green movement and see that across pollinates. There needs to be a just transition commission uh, and the union are pushing for that. It, it needs to be um, treated uh, with urgency and um, so I, I would say recruiting newer and younger people and they can see how it, 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 it both they do overlap to my mind you know so yeah definitely brilliant look thank you both very much um, I'm, 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 yeah. very enlightening yeah. hour for, for me personally and I, I i think from looking at a couple of faces i think also from from, from people listening so thank you very very much um for your time and we'll continue this conversation i'm sure Thanks. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks. Okay. Nice to see you, Carl. Okay. Bye bye.